Good afternoon, darlings, and welcome to a very special video. This is not just special because it's a Halloween video and oh, so spooky. No, this is also a uh, collaboration. Yes, this is part one of a two-part video. The second part is created by the most wonderful Star Sky. So, to get the full video and the full story, you're gonna have to tune into her channel after this one. Please do so and like her video and leave a comment if you like this collaboration. I'm gonna leave a link, a little sneak peek after the end of the video, so please stay awake for the whole thing. Also, for the best listening experience, remember headphones. Thank you. Have a pleasant Halloween. Come on in, darling. Come closer. Don't be afraid. Just because I'm the director of this bureau. Wow. <laughs> you really are just as cute as he said. Hmm. Let's see. Well, cute, yeah. Feminine. Your appearance exudes, well, classical beauty. Let's get back to that in a second, but I think you're gonna be perfect for the role. What's the matter? You seem a little stumped. Hmm, actually, let me try something. Right now, let me just get closer to you. Let me embrace you, hold you in my arms. Just like this. Mm. Why this, you ask? Well, wouldn't you be happy to be my little good girl? All right then, perfect. Mm. That was a test and uh, you passed it perfectly. I'll explain later why this was uh, crucial. You can uh, Close your mouth again, darling. Hmm, how adorable. You really are a good girl, aren't you? So, do you know why you're here? Yeah? What did the team down in uh, containment tell you about this job? They just sent you here? Right. Well, that does explain the... Uh, Look that's resting on your face. Come here. Don't be afraid and don't be shy. I'll explain everything. I just need you to uh, relax a little. Don't worry. I know you can handle this job. I know. For a fact that you did really well in your schooling, but um, I'm gonna tell you a bit about our bureau and uh, about why we do what we do. I know, I know. You got top scores in, you know, both practical appliances of pseudoscience as well as in um anti-theoretical knowledge of the unexisting. Yeah, good job, little darling. However, I'm also fully aware of a sharp decline in wit when it comes to topics such as um, history of the unknown. Besides, we just went over this. You do want to be my uh, good girl, right? Then listen. Good. As you know, ghosts are real. Yeah, 
but not just ghosts. Pretty much anything you read about in literature has its place in our world. The biggest real secret is actually that humans aren't exactly uh, imaginative. They don't have the power to think beyond what they can see, smell, hear, and touch. Yes, exactly. The uh, human brain is severely limited. That's actually how the uh, Bureau started several centuries ago, unlocking the human brain. We probably shouldn't have done that in hindsight, but there's another of uh, humanity's well. Some would call it downsides, but I call it a bonus. Curiosity. Where would we be without curiosity? Well, <laughs> in your case, you would be in a very good place, I think. I can tell you have grace, beauty, elegance. You really are entrancing in the most delicate way. <laughs> Enough about that. So, things exist that humans think are merely stories. Well, unfortunately for them, and fortunately for us, it's uh, the other way around. The stories exist to cover up the supernatural facts that would otherwise scare or impede normal human society. And, as you know, we aren't just talking elves, ghosts, and dragons. Well, there is a large enclave of specifically elves and dragons in Ireland. They are the minority of cases we are helping with. Oh no. It reminds me that I haven't heard back from Daniel for a while. Um... You know, I hope he's doing fine in Ireland. Yes, he's, he's checking out a lair in Dublin. I will have to get back to him. Please remind me after this um, little talk. But no, no, I um, I love dragons. For obvious reasons. You know, I'm half. And uh, some of my siblings are too. They are even on... Our watch lists, uh, not because they're a danger to society, but we did have some incidents at a library last year where some humans reported a more, I think, vivid book reading. Yes, yes, the library is run by vampires mainly, and then, well, my sibling, they're half dragon too. Yeah, unlike me. They enjoy bringing a little entropy to the human world. Hence the watch list. And then it's our job to clean up the entropy so our world can exist. Uh, I really need to visit them again just to see if they are mm, behaving. But yes, as you can see, most entities, they coexist with us quite peacefully even. And, um, yeah. Well, some are forgotten and misunderstood, but there's also... No, oh, wait. There's... It's... Let's get back to those later. We also have violent entities. Some we simply have to take out when we encounter them. Um, they're made by an old bot. You know, destruction and hatred. Poltergeist are a classic example of these spirits who are lingering after a rather harsh exit from our plane of existence. This is what most of the uh, scary ghost stories are based on. Do you know um, Washington Irving? No? He's, he's long gone now, he's dead. Mm -hmm. He was a bureau agent. Lived back in the 1820s, one of our earlier agents, and yeah, 
he was researching an old German folk legend of a headless horseman. Yeah, you know, the countryside. It was a ghost and he was, um, well, missing his head. His research papers got leaked, unfortunately, and spread panic in Germany. So he wrote a tale to cover up the leak. Yes, the legend of Sleepy Hollow. He moved the entire thing to the uh, United States and, yeah, that removed the heat from Germany. And I hear it became quite a popular book. I think there's even a movie now. <laughs> yes, that's our research. We also have some middle class entries. We call them entities in class B. Entities that we, for one reason or another, should remove from an ethical viewpoint. But we don't. Because they help us in return for us letting them exist. And these are very common too, and not our proudest achievements always. But you know, sometimes you have to sacrifice a little to help the greater good. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, an example. Bram Stoker. Have you read about him? Hmm? He's another well-known agent of the Bureau. Or, I mean, he was. Yeah, very great agent. He made a deal with a vampire to bring him fame and fortune. Yeah, it's absurd, but... We don't know how to deal with vampires, really, and, well, Dracula, as the entity calls itself, does. So, yeah, who do you think now gets the royalty for the research that Bram Stoker, he wrote, you know, the novels today? Yeah, Stoker's family? No, Dracula, of course. I think at this point he's probably the wealthiest entity in our world. And, uh, yeah, he assists with vampire problems. Quid pro quo. Yeah, you're probably gonna meet him someday. If you're unlucky. He is uh, unbearable to have a conversation with. And speaking of old beings, we... We have someone who calls herself the Queen of the Cosmos. Uh, can you believe it? I mean, she's... Very cute, but you know, being out there in the universe all alone, she also seems a bit lonely. Yeah, if you get to meet her, be nice to her, okay? She might be a little grandiose, but she just wants a bit of love, like most other beings. And uh, of course, we also want to keep her happy because, well... She does have cosmic powers and all that, so <laughs> just be nice to her. Yeah, so we span way back very old members of the Bureau, both entities and agents. And then we have people like you. Agents with only a quarter of a lifetime behind them. You're in your early 20s, right? Green as grass, but oh, so charming. Yes, young agents. A few years ago, we uh, thought the internet would collapse the known world with its ease of access, globalization of information. But you know what? It turned out the internet was our greatest asset. When you have millions of stories, people with Photoshop chopping up fake sightings, and you have games, media, literature, everything is exploding all over the globe. Well, turns out no one really wants to believe anything anymore. Huh. They're all happy little mundane materialists living their predefined lives through narrow-minded cultural assumptions. Works for us. 
we even took advantage of it. Most of our research is now public domain. Yeah, because everyone just thinks it's, you know, it's creepypasta or the more modern term SCP. But I know they're not the same, but, you know, give me a break. I'm old. Of course, some of the SCPs are real. Yeah, they are research papers after all. SCPs are a social media stunt that we attempted a few years back here at the Bureau. And, um, well, it's our most operation, successful operation so far. It's, yeah, it was immediately picked up as an uh, international trend. And thousands of people have written their own. Just, you know, be for fun. It's, people think SCPs are just for fun. But they aren't. And this actually brings us to the uh, crux of the problem. So, where SCP and history meets, about 100 years ago, we had a great agent called Lovecraft. Yeah, he wasn't the nicest person. He was a subject of his time, but um, he was a good agent, and we can't be picky. Mm -hmm. Well, his research, it... Uh, yeah, it was inspired, actually, or it does inspire many of the SCPs we have today. You know, Cthulhu and Eldritch Horrors. <laughs> How silly is that? No. Most of the entities that he wrote about or fought back then, they are contained or thought dead. However, sometimes we are mistaken. This is not one of his most famous writings. However, it is one of the real ones. Um, it revolved around an entity that was born out of agony. Mm -hmm. This is what we described earlier as a poltergeist. Right. So, the birth of this poltergeist goes back to 1923. And, um... It's described in Lovecraft's research paper called Rats and the Wolves. Yeah? It's written from the perspective of the scion of the De La Poa family. He moved um, from Massachusetts to his ancestral estate in England, the ruined Exum Priory. It's uh, an old church kind of building. To the dismay of... Um, well, not him, but nearby residents. He restored the priory, plainly revealing his ignorance of the horrific history of the place. After moving in, he uh, and his cats, they frequently hear rats scurrying hmm, inside the walls. Hence the name. And uh, upon investigating further and as also revealed in his recurring dreams. He learns that the family maintained an underground city for centuries, where they raised generations of, um, well, human cattle, for lack of a better word, to supply their taste for human flesh. Now, maddened by this revelation, you know, of his family's past, and driven by a hereditary cruelty. The last remaining de la Poor attacked one of his friends in the dark of the cavernous city and uh, ate him. He was subsequently subdued and placed in a mental institution. And um, at least one other investigator on the case back then with Lovecraft went insane. Well, hmm. but soon after, the um, Exum Priory was destroyed. The original living family member maintained his innocence, proclaiming that it was the rats, the rats in the walls, who ate the man. 
and uh, he continued to be plagued by the sound of rats in the wall if the walls of his cell. Now, fast forward to our time. It's obviously the poltergeist of the victims who was terrorizing him in his cell. But since it was technically contained from our point of view, we stopped following the case much. It was archived. We figured that with the last member of the De La Poire family dead and the priory destroyed, the poltergeist would move on. But no. Where the priory stood, a village now flourishes with everything that entails. Schools, residential districts, you know, a normal little place for normal little humans. What made this place stand out is that, while of course being on our watch list, several stories showed up. Stories with uh, similarities to both each other, but also, you guessed it, our friend from 1923. You can understand why we now wish to investigate these sightings, but you may still be confused as to why we wish to send a good girl, such as yourself specifically. Well, as I mentioned, we've done a lot of our latest research online. And when we cross references um, that, you know, the different stories seem to have in common with each other, we get very specific reactions out of phrases with this particular entity. And we actually did send an ordinary team to investigate, but the entity reacted harshly and aggressively towards them. The entity is seen lingering mainly near mirrors, so we may assume that it's searching for its human-like counterpart to mirror itself. That's why sending these big brutes and has resulted in not just failure, but also casualties. As you can see in the case file on the table behind me, the entity has been described with certain qualities. Qualities I am attempting to mimic with you. Yeah, just by looking at you, I can sense that you are a beautiful expression of feminine energy. Your tests say that you are gentle yet fierce. You're nurturing, loving, you're strong yet graceful. You are sensual and confident. You are secure, stable and grounded. And yet, you still feel a slight tinkle inside of you when I tell you that you are my good girl. In any case, these qualities are exactly what the entity seeks, and they are what you will give her. Not as a transfer of power. Of course, I would like you back here in one piece. But more so, a way of opening up a channel of communication. Yeah? Good. Your objective is thus, to allow us to communicate via a stable channel with the entity. Is that clear? Hmm, good. To fully summarize your objectives and make it clear to understand what you're heading into, you are to travel to the village where we got the reports of a female ghostly entity. This entity is the culmination of much horror happening in that area in the early 1900s. The entity can manifest anywhere, but it's relying on mirrors. So, we assume it will enjoy talking to someone it can directly 
relate to. In this case, you. You are to open up any channel of communication with the entity. Do not, on any circumstances, attempt to engage any further, as the entity is considered extremely dangerous. I will give you the reports from the previous engagement team. None of them, unfortunately, uh, made it back due to this creature's aggressiveness. But please don't fret. With your qualities, you should have no problems engaging and come back alive to tell the tale. That's it. You're dismissed. Wait before you go. One last thing. When you do come back, I would like you to report to me directly. I have a few other tasks. Someone with uh, your qualities could tend to. And see you later. <laughs>